I am here on a Sunday morning, and we are continuing our um, Body of Christ video. And the part of the body that we're focusing on today are the eyes and the ears. Uh, we're in the middle of our worship service, and two people that allow us to hear the message of Christ and a lot of and see the message of Christ uh, has to come with our sound people and our audio and visual team. We're now in a COVID time where we don't uh, come to worship service together. So this part of the body is very important to keep us all connected and all together. Uh, the people that we're gonna see is Bill Troutwine on the video and Jordan Ammons on the sound. So please um, let's uh, view them. Good morning. We are here with Malcolm Porter, and he plays a vital part in helping uh, a part of the ministry of the church and the body of Christ as the stomach in feeding people. Malcolm, good morning. How good. are you? I'm great. Good morning, Jeff. What are we doing here this morning with everybody? This morning, we're getting ready to prepare a hot breakfast for the residents at Project Hope over at Pinellas Park. Project Hope is a homeless shelter that initially started out as a tent city that now has developed into a, a uh, home site for homeless individuals that are transitioning from homeless back to living in houses, apartments. Uh, we provide a hot breakfast twice a month on the second and fourth Saturday. The breakfast consists of eggs. We do about 45 dozen eggs. We create Biscuits, we got hot grits, we're going to have boiled eggs, we have special mixed gravy, and in addition we have patty sausage, we take out bananas and orange juice. In addition, we also prepare some uh, bags to go with breakfast in it that we pass out as we go to Hope. Various individuals at the bus stop or as we see individuals walking from home to catch the bus to go to work. That's essentially what we do. We start around 6 a.m. We normally uh, get out to home around 7.30. And as you can see, we have a team of people here. It's about eight or nine of us here today, and there's another eight or nine of us that do it on the second day. And then tomorrow you will feed uh, the refuge uh, on the fifth Sunday. Tell us a little bit about that. On the fifth Sunday of four times a year, we uh, do a project called uh, Service Sunday, a Sunday of service. Instead of having church service, we go out into the community. 
our, our job is to get here around this same time and prepare about half of the amount of breakfast food items that we cook for the refuge. For refuge, we cook for about 150. For ref, I mean, for hope, we cook for about 150. For, hope, for refuge, we prepare enough food for about 80 individuals. And again, we do the same breakfast. A boiled egg, scrambled egg, patty sausage, hot grits, a boiled egg, gravy, biscuits, and patty sausage, orange juice, and banana. And again, it's our effort to reach out into our community. We have other projects that you probably know about, like the laundry, uh, the other items that we do. And so with this group that is a part of the body of the Christ, that's the stomach, what other projects do you do that feed people, uh, such as maybe the third Sunday dinner at the church? Yes, in-house here, as you mentioned, we do the third Sunday dinner uh, for about eight months of the year, normally starts in September. We also prepare a Thanksgiving uh, luncheon for our preschool. We do a uh, teacher appreciation uh, meal for the teachers over at Scottcrest Elementary. And then we also uh, help out with the uh, picnic that we have twice a year over in the park. Essentially, we have about 14 of us that do the Hope Refuge third Sunday, Thanksgiving, Teachers Appreciation, and the picnic. And this is our effort and our mission to, uh, like you're saying, to feed the body of Christ uh, through our effort. Well, we definitely appreciate it. I know I enjoyed all of those meals. Uh, throughout the year and I know that you are feeding people uh, both that are uh, part of the church and part of the community and uh, part of the preschool and all over the place so we thank you very much for being the stomach uh, and the representation of the group for being the stomach of the body of Christ thank you very much Robin. thank you hello we are with Dan and he is our maintenance man and uh, he works at the church and he's in the middle of a project. Dan, what do you uh, do around here as the arms of the body of Christ? I do the, the, the building maintenance. That's lights, floors, toilets, windows, doors. And I make things to make the church function easier. Okay, what are you working on today? Today is a stool or a step to put on the step to extend it so we could put something on it without it tipping over. And that's in the sanctuary and for yes, everyone the to sanctuary enjoy. Sanctuary up on the chancel. Yes, yes. Well, it, that's... it makes the leg stronger so we could put a, a lower, or something in the middle of it. Instead of putting it on the floor, we could raise it. People could see it better. Very nice. And you also do, when we are uh, in person worship, you also. Uh, have another way that you extend your arms for people. What do you, what do you do on Sunday mornings? Sunday morning, I'm Mr. Dan the Doorman with a smile on for everybody. That's right, and you shake everyone's fist, hand and fist, welcome fist, them and fist pumps right now. <laughs> make sure they they yeah fist pumps and make sure they uh, open have the doors, their masks. Open the doors, the sister the ladies out with their walkers. Very good, very very good. Well, I appreciate your time. And thank you very much for all the service that you do, also do the for God and definitely the lights. Thank you so much. Bye. Well, we're here with Bob Booth, who uh, runs the Flower Ministry of the Church. Hello, Bob. How are you? Good afternoon, Jeff. We. Uh, what are you uh, putting together today? Well, I'm putting together an artificial arrangement because we're going back into online worship. Normally, I would be driving to St. Petersburg to the Wholesale Forest to buy the flowers for use on Sunday. But a small arrangement of artificial flowers serves our purpose better at this time. And why? Um, what interests you in flowers and how did you get involved with this gift? Jeff, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 I think it's been about 10 years ago that our florist dropped us because we were too small an account. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this and I said, 
I grew up on a farm with flowers. We always had things. I've always been interested in this. I delivered flowers from McMullen Forest and Colonial Forest in Safety Harbor. I said, I think I can do this. So I set about to take over the job of creating arrangements. Um, as time has progressed, I feel like I've gotten better and I certainly have a better idea of the flowers. Um, with fall coming on, I, I chose these hydrangeas because they're a summer flower and yet I went through our supplies and I found some oranges which would begin to pick up the fall colors and so I put them into, into I will put those into this arrangement. Um, over time our flowers have been sent out to nursing homes, uh, they have been donated, but I certainly will create flowers in honor of someone's anniversary or a birthday or the remembrance of a loved one. Um, all of these things are reminders of the beauty of nature that surrounds us and the fact that we are under a, a loving God. Absolutely, and I know the people that, that purchase the flowers, their uh, hearts in it because they represent something important in their life and uh, you make everything really pretty and uh, keepsake and memories and uh, we appreciate what you do with your gifts and talents. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is that everything we need to do to this? I found an E need to go on Bible. I need to change that one slide. Uh, Which slide's that? Uh, church school. I, I haven't changed. It just made me a new one. I just have a new one here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. See you later. We're going to do Jeff's little video here. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye, Gabe. We are finishing up staff meeting, and I'm here with the designated legs of the body of Christ, Pastor Kathy and Pastor Andy. And as the legs of the body of Christ at Trinity, you help move our body forward and continue to, to keep pace. And we just ended staff meeting. Why is staff meeting such an important part of, of what we do as a, a congregation and as, a, as leaders? <laughs> I guess I'm the right leg. Yeah. The right leg, the left, left leg. leg. <laughs> uh, no, we our staff meetings are really important, and we get together once a week with all our staff just to make sure that everybody stays on the same page about what's going on in the congregation, what each person on the staff needs to do to make sure that happens. Uh, and, and it's primarily about communication and just having a, an intentional time every week to sit down with a calendar, with our schedule, with our worship bulletin, and just make sure everybody knows what's, uh, what's going on and what their responsibilities are in that. Well, and also another important part of that is, is prayer. We, during this time, we pray for people in the congregation or uh, other people that are close to the staff that are in need of prayer which I think helps bind us together as a staff too, being intentional about that. And, uh, and every member of the church uh, is, uh, is sent a, a little card on their birthday that comes from the staff. And one thing we do at our staff meetings is uh, we pass those cards around and everybody signs them. So that when you get your card on your birthday with the staff signatures, uh, it takes place in the staff meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, the staff, it's important for us to get together and do those things. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And thank you for being the legs of the body of Christ. <laughs>